So I'm just uh, driving along Salt Lake City today <coughs> and I read an article uh, that Salt Lake City has the worst air in the country at this point in time. <coughs> so I thought it was a good time to use my bioweapons defense mode and uh, it seems to be doing pretty good. Not that I can really tell the difference in smell or anything, but it makes you feel better knowing that you're in the most polluted area in the nation currently, and you have a bioweapons defense HEPA filter uh, that Tesla puts in, in their cars. And I think, you know, it um, just gives you a little bit of peace of mind knowing that you're not sucking in a whole bunch of pollution. Um, you know, it's really easy to set bioweapons defense mode. So let me scroll down real quick. Hopefully you can see this. I didn't set this up ahead of time. But you can see this little indicator down here on the uh, screen. I wasn't really quite sure when I first got it how to put it in, in this mode, but you just click here and uh, you have all your different settings here, AC on, AC, so this is your front climate, uh, which is, I believe, the only one I have, and then you can change it to, to rear, which is climates off, but you set it in your front climate, so you just click on the front down here, put it in there, and it's actually blowing at a faster rate than when you don't have it on, so you get a little bit more noise from the air conditioner. Uh, going on um, and then you just hit that and basically you have the little indicator showing you down here that you're in bioweapons defense mode and yeah, so now now that I'm talking to you I just kind of also wanted to show you kind of a cool feature here uh, with the version 2.0 beta that they put in um, right now I just entered it. I pulled back once on the little knob down here. And I am now currently in the adaptive cruise control. As you can see, the car pulled right in front of me. Uh, hopefully that got caught on tape. Um, but he pulled in front of me. The system knew that it was going faster than me, so it didn't slam on the brakes, anything like that. Now, let me switch lanes and kind of show you how it works when you're coming up on slower traffic. Um, it's showing down here the, ah, just moved, maybe the next guy. Uh, just slowed down, it's, it's catching these guys. So it's not perfect yet, because it's catching these guys in the other lane, and so it's slowing down. I'd rather it be a little bit more careful driving than actually get in a wreck, which is basically what they're doing. So let me see, and we're limited to 75 at this point, so I can't go above 75 miles per hour in the adaptive cruise control mode. Um, it's really great, I love it. Like I drove probably 300 odd miles the other day using it. I basically didn't touch any of my pedals. So there you see, I'm, I'm coming up on the vehicle it's slowing down, it's adapting to that person. And I've used it in town, so as soon as I turn my signal on, it starts going going faster, So, which is a really nice, nice feature, especially if you're trying to merge and someone's coming up in the other lane. Um, let me get over that lane ends. That 300 mile trip, I, I basically didn't have to press my gas or my brake almost the whole time. And I mean, it stopped at stoplights. That's provided there's someone in front of you that's watching that stoplight. So you have to maintain uh, visual control of the car and know when you're at stoplights, all of that. I mean, same thing, you know, with, with probably the autopilot beta when you're below 45 miles an hour. Um, I, I, I would probably be very aware of that especially until they've worked out all the bugs. <laughs> so, um, I'm very impressed with the adaptive cruise control. You know, it's not autopilot yet, but it is sure making 
driving a lot less stressful, a lot easier to do long distance traveling. As I mentioned in, in my previous uh, video, I am planning on taking uh, around a 5,000 mile road trip uh, here in my Tesla Model X and it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm hoping that they increase the beta to you know, at least 65, maybe 75 so that I can do the road trip with an extra driver because I'm not going to have someone driving with me the majority of that trip. So um, for the most part, it's going to be me driving and that is a lot of miles to be driving by yourself. And um, I, I think your fatigue is going to be a lot lower when you're using these functionalities the way they're supposed to be used. So like here, I can be looking over, you know, looking up at the really nice screen in front of me, looking up at mountains, if there's mountains up there, looking over to the left. And it's, you know, the only thing you have to really worry about right at this point is that you're maintaining lane control. Now, <laughs> when they have the full version of autopilot, you know, you'll be able to take your eyes off the road for a couple seconds at a time and look at what's around you and be able to enjoy the road trip a little bit more, especially if you're by yourself. That's the problem I've had when you're road tripping is I'm typically the one that drives. And by driving, you don't get to see what's around you and enjoy what a road trip is really about. So that that's what I'm really looking forward to with the autopilot and these features. It's, it's making driving easier and allowing you to enjoy driving a lot more than you know having to spend a hundred percent of your uh, you know thought process towards driving and knowing that if you look away for eh, a couple seconds you're not going to run into someone who just stopped in front of you I mean just really de-stresses the driving experience quite quite significantly so if you're looking at them even though it's in beta it's very very smart um, there are a couple instances where it's stopped with no apparent reason in front of me why it would have stopped but I mean, it probably sensed something and then it kept going or it's as easy as putting your foot back on the gas and then it kind of continues to go the way it was going. Um, but I found uh, driving with the Autopilot 2.0 uh, beta version has been enjoyable. Uh, I am now enjoying the bioweapons defense mode and breathing clean air considering, like I said, we have the worst air in the nation currently. So where better to test your bioweapons defense boat than where it currently has the worst pollution in the nation. And so anyway, I'm about ready to head back home and I just thought I'd throw on a video and kind of show you some of the features and, and what I'm experiencing here uh, driving my Model X and I'm really loving the experience so just like everybody says like comment share uh, tell me what you think uh, I really would like to know and you know if, if you want to see that road trip um, I'm probably planning on video logging it uh, regardless of whether I have too many followers or subscribers or not I just think it's gonna be a cool experience in that way you know, even my family can uh, experience what I'm experiencing when I'm on the road for probably over a month. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, have a good day. So here's a kind of perfect example of kind of what this uh, adaptive cruise control will do. Hopefully this car will continue going straight on this road. And so I can show you kind of what it's doing when you get to a stop sign. <clears throat> so right now I have the adaptive cruise control on. For some reason I got it maxed out at 65 on this road. 
which the speed limit is uh, he's turning. But anyway, it, it would take me to a complete stop um, once they stop. But once you reach this point, you're going to have to stop the vehicle. It'll continue to go and follow that car through the intersection. So you got to make sure you stop at the stop sign too. It's not perfect, but this is probably not the right application for adaptive cruise control at a, you know, on a 25 mile an hour road, which I was kind of speeding, sorry. Um, yeah, but it kind of shows you how, how and where you can use it. And it's really handy for traffic.